Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, the place where I not only tell you about what's going on in the gun world, but I also tell you what we're going to do about it. And thank you so much for stopping by. All right, guys, what we're going to talk about is an excerpt of the interview that I did with Larry Keene. He is the SVP of Government and Public Affairs and General Counsel for NSSF. This guy is the top lawyer for one of the largest organizations for gun rights in the country, NSSF. The stuff that he says in this interview, again, this is just his opinion, but we had an amazing conversation around when ARs are going to end up in front of the Supreme Court. He has some really interesting observations, some really behind-the-scenes baseball, and I cannot wait to hear what you guys think about this one because this stuff is the stuff that we fight for every single day. They are going to continue to infringe because infringers are going to infringe, but eventually they're going to run against the Second Amendment, Bruin, Heller, and Common Use. This interview... This little segment is something so powerful and gives you one of the most complete arguments for the ownership of AR-15s across the board, as if we even needed any. But this is something that is amazing, and please send this one out. Now, if you are new, please consider giving us a subscription. We are always looking to get as many people in the fold as we can, because we need to pass the blessing of the Second Amendment along to the next generation, and we can do that together. Thank you so much for your consideration, but now let's get into the interview with Larry Keene, and I cannot wait to hear what you guys think of this format in the comments field below. I, I think we're going to see the Supreme Court take up uh, bans on modern sporting rifles or bans on um, on magazine capacity uh, sometime in the next, you know, three, maybe five years at the outside. So, um, OK, you know, so I, I think it's hard for the court not to uh, flesh out uh, and rule on some of these things, these, these things that were not directly decided by the Bruin decision. Which, right, and so you know, it was about really about the right to carry outside your home, and um, versus you know what what firearms are covered or not covered right. by the Second Amendment. Well, and so, man, this is great. I'm I'm loving the direction this is going. So, I mean, stack that a little bit further. Like, I mean, you mentioned to it from the Heller decision, the right to establish basically have your own firearm, which is mind boggling. That even had to be said. Then you've got Bruin, which says, oh, well, not only can you not only have it, now you can actually carry it and defend yourself. So it's it's yeah. stacking in that right decision right. or in the right direction. So that's that's actually something that we hear a lot from the viewers on this channel in the comments. Um, these AR bans are unconstitutional because they, they would be considered common use. I mean, like if you're looking at it and doing a test, this would be a common use item, just like a magazine would be, all these different items. What's your take on that? Do you think that has a, a real good holding? I think you're exactly right. Unquestionably, modern sporting rifles are commonly owned um, and they're commonly used for lawful purposes, including self-defense. There are by now 25 million plus mm -hmm. modern yep. sporting rifles in civilian possession in the United States. And to, to kind of put that in perspective, in a case out of Boston or Massachusetts, in a First Circuit case, the Supreme Court 9-0 said that stun guns, at, at the time there were estimates that there were somewhere between two and 300,000 know, uh, of them in civilian possession. The Supreme Court said those were commonly owned, commonly used for self-defense and were protected by the Second Amendment. People say, you know, that Bruin was the first Second mm -hmm. Amendment case since Heller. That's not entirely true. Uh, as far as gun case, but this case um, by the Supreme Court said, you know, 200 plus thousand stun guns were in common use. Well, in 25 million rifles, by the way, the most popular rifle being sold in the United States mm -hmm. today Hands for down. lawful purposes that mm -hmm. are rarely used in crimes or in homicides, very small number. I mean, often tragic, high profile, but mm -hmm. still is a relative number. Um, they are clearly bearable arms that are commonly owned and used for lawful purposes. So I think very clearly, uh, and, and so once that's established, then the burden under Heller and as emphasized by Bruin is the government's burden to prove that limiting ownership of those bearable arms that are covered by the Second Amendment is consistent with our national heritage and traditions for gun restrictions that existed at the time of our founding, the time mm -hmm. the Constitution was adopted. And clearly, 
That's not the case. There were no right. restrictions on what firearms you could own mm -hmm. based on what type they were. And then, so the other side tries to argue, first, one of the arguments they make is, well, it has to be commonly used. And, and they, we hear this even in the magazine cases. They're not commonly used because, you know, you rarely ever fire more than 10 rounds. Well, that's mm -hmm. not, it's, it's not right. commonly fired, right? It's yeah. commonly owned, mm -hmm. and commonly used for lawful purposes. You purchase the firearm for the purpose of using it for, for self-defense or hunting mm -hmm. or target shooting, right? And so the test is in how many times did you actually pull the trigger? That's like saying, you know, you don't you don't own golf club for golfing because you rarely golf. Right. So, right. Exactly. Um, so that's not the test. Then we hear we see this all the time now, particularly post Bruin. The court said firearms that are dangerous and unusual could fall mm -hmm. outside of the scope of the Second Amendment. Now, what we see the other side saying in court is dangerous. And then they literally take out and and insert in brackets or which right. is just purposefully misleading to mm -hmm. the court because that's not what the court said in Heller. 100%. Right. All right, that concludes that segment of the interview with Larry Keene. Again, SVP and general counsel for NSSF. This is the top of the food chain, and I hope that you guys enjoyed this content. And if you do, I will absolutely do more. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you on the next one. I'm Braden. See you later.